the heart of fear. The witch's cauldron. <laughs> Stop, Renee. Keep coming back for more, eh? Well, there's plenty more. So keep coming. <laughs> Besides, my idiot editors just gave me a boost in salary. It's a boost of a rival publisher. <laughs> I get the rest of this corpse next issue. <laughs> yep, it's me again, the old witch. Mistress of the Haunted Fear, Shiver Ship, Crape Cooker, and all that sort of rot. <laughs> Come on in. My cauldron's boiled off to a crud. Waiting for you. Looks like garbage. Hey, there's a yarn. And I'll just tell it to you. It's about a garbage collector. Say, did you get any St. Valentine's Day cards? Well, this garbage collector did. Ready? I call this horror helping poetic justice. Old Abner Elliot stood on the porch of his ramshackle house, grinning down at the chattering, giggling group of children before him. His wrinkled eyes were glazed and wet as he studied their beaming faces. Goldie, Mr. Elliot, they're just like no. What's one? You fixed him up fine. She thanks for the toys, Mr. Elliot. Old Admiral Elliot was a garbage man. For 36 years, he'd been collecting the refuse of the town. He never made much money at it, but he'd been a happy man. That is, until about two years ago, before, when Abner's wife had died. Glad you like the toys, kids. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Mr. Elliot. Since his wife's death, Abner had been lonely very lonely. So he started salvaging the broken toys he found in the refuse can. He worked throughout the year repairing them so that he could give them to the poor children at Christmas time. Gonna do this again next year, Mr. Elliot? Yep, every year till I, till I can't anymore. Gee, you're swell, Mr. Elliot. Can we come around and watch you sometimes? Maybe I'll watch you work? Anytime, kids. Anytime. Directly across the street from Abner Elliot's rundown house, Henry Burgundy, the town's richest man, had built a luxurious modern home for himself and his only heir, his spoiled son, Harold. Richard Channel's brats howling and yelling. And look at that broken down rat trap. It's an eyesore. Why doesn't he sell out, Dad? Henry Burgundy had offered Abner a handsome price for his dilapidated old home, but Abner had refused to sell. Ah, the Ed Geyser's sentimental about the town. Says he and his wife lived there happily for their whole married life. And he wants to die there too, just as she did. But it ruins the neighborhood, Dad. It depreciates the value of all property. Well, what can I do, son? I've tried pulling strings to evict him, but he owns the house and lots free and clear. Dirty old slob. A garbage man, no less. Oh, how revolting. Unless, unless we can force him to move. Start a smear campaign. He's a sensitive old fool. We could make it rough on him. Hi, now you're talking, poor. And first of all, Let's figure out how to get rid of those lousy animals he's got. In Abner's loneliness, he'd begun to pick up any poor stray dog or cat that he found searching out food in the refuse can. He'd taken them into his home, fed and cared for them, and kept them as company to fill his lonely hours. He must have seven or eight dogs and ten or eleven cats. You know how he feeds them, Dad? We collect scraps from his garbage truck. He couldn't afford to feed one of those strays if he had to buy the food. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is make him get rid of those pets of his. And I'll start a gossip campaign. Boy, we'll run him out of town fast. Meanwhile, Abner, oblivious to the insidious campaign the Burgundies were starting, continued making his rounds. Hi, here comes Mr. Elliot. Hi, Mr. Elliot. Hi, kid. And hearted Abner never failed to fill his pockets with candy bought with his hard-earned money. He'd pass it out to the children as they crowded around his ancient garbage wagon. Any candy to die, Mr. Elliot? Here you are, kids. Thanks to Mr. Elliot. To the folks of the town. Abner and his rattle trap rig were a friendly and familiar sight. Everybody loved old Abner Elliot. 
Morning, Abner. How's business today? Smelly, huh? Ho, ho. <laughs> That's right, Mr. Garden. But the wheels of hate were beginning to turn. Sorry, Mr. Burgundy. There's nothing I can do about it. Maybe the folks around town wanted a licensing law passed. Dog and cut licenses, eh? Side that to do it. He couldn't afford to buy those. And so, on cold January nights. How's that? Dad? Dig him up more. Old man Baker will be steaming. Those are his prize rose bushes. The diggings in the various gardens around town were blamed on. And the Elliot's mutts, Mr. Baker. They must have done it. We ought to make him get rid of them. My prize rose is ruined. You're right, Harold. Little by little, the townsfolk whose gardens had been destroyed were aroused. He's got to get rid of those stray mongrels. A licensed law is the only way. Then let's make the town board pass one. And so... Yes, officer? It's a bad you dogs and cats, Mr. Elliot. You'll have to buy licenses for them, or they'll go to the pound. It's a new law. Licenses? How much are they? Two fifty a piece, Mr. Elliot. That adds up to an awful lot for your menagerie. It was a sad day for Abner Elliot when they came and took his pets away. Eleven cats and ten dogs would have cost the poor old man more than fifty dollars. He just didn't have the money. That they gave for. <laughs> He's early cap one. When I- I'm very son. He won't even be able to afford that one. Henry Burgundy went to see an acquaintance in a neighboring town. So, you want me to start a garbage collecting service in competition with Abner Elliot, eh, Henry? That's right, Fred. I want you to put him out of business. You cut his price in half. I can't do it, Henry. I'd lose money. Don't worry, Fred. I'll make up for what you lose, and you'll be able to show a handsome profit. Besides, I'll pay you out of my own pocket, but keep this quiet, I eh? Meanwhile... That's what I said! He's nothing but a fifth-year-old man, Mrs. Butterly! Do you realize he's brought rats into this neighborhood? Oh dear! Lord knows what your children learn from him, Mrs. Phelps! He's so dirty at all! A garbage man! How awful! Should be forced to move out of this neighborhood, Mrs. Ames! It isn't respectable! You're so right! And when one of the children became seriously ill, the Burgundies jumped at the chance. It's probably that candy Abner Elliot gives the kids, full of disease, dirty, contaminated. He ought to be run out of town, that's what! Then, Fred Amsterdam moved in, backed by Old Man Burgundy. Half the price, you say? Correct. Half what you're paying now, and better service. What do I sign? The wheels of hate were spinning faster now. You heard me! If I catch or hear of you that you went to that dirty old man's house, I'll whip the daylights out of you! Understand? Yes, Daddy? And so, his pet's gone. The children no longer coming to see him. His business wiped out. People refusing to talk to him. Abner Elliot withdrew into the loneliness of his dreary, run-down home. <gasps> Can't understand it, boy. Used to be fox with friendly. <laughs> now, I'm all, I'm all alone. Except for you, boy. Oh. But as February rolled around, the Burgundies prepared to pour salt into Abner Elliot's gaping wounds. Mrs. Sardy, get this. I bought this valentine for old man Elliot. <laughs> Noisy up children, loud is a bell. Punch it as perfume, but you just smell from garbage. Ha ha ha. I that last crack. Hey, that's the rhythmic dawn. I'm gonna get me one. I have an idea, son. I know where I can buy a whole carload of these insulting valentines. <laughs> if we could get everyone in town to send old man Elliot one, he'd move out. Sure, we could buy his property cheap. Let's get him and pat him out. And so, at St. Valentine's Day near, 
Here's one for you, Mr. Baker. Make sure you mail it out, eh? <laughs> this one's a Lulu, Henry. Fifteen and fifteen make thirty. Young gals are awfully purty. But on Valentine's Day, all I want to say is you are disgustingly dirty. <laughs> Mr. Burgundy and his spoiled son, Harold, pass out the heartbreaking cards to the whole town. Listen to this called I got to end my alien, Martha. A tree is beautiful if its owner prunes it, but our town isn't because your house ruins it. Ha ha ha! Isn't that something? <laughs> On St. Valentine's Eve, stamps were licked and envelopes sealed. Hoy Ed, no it's not. Yeah, they made our St. Valentine's Day cards. <laughs> And early the next morning. Look at this boy. A whole stack of mail. How come? What's today? Oh, that's it. February 14th. St. Valentine's Day. <laughs> well, I'll be darn. Those little talks didn't forget, up, forget me after all. Then, one by one, old Abner Elliot opened and read the vicious, shameful cards. S some s some people live in the country. S some some people s live in town. Why don't you do us a favor? Jump in the river and some folks are born to make money, others to kill and to rob. I was born for one purpose, to call you a dirty old slum. <laughs> for weeks after St. Valentine's Day, no one saw hide nor hair of Abner Elliot. Maybe he left town, Pop. Went away. Then I'll buy up his house for black taxes. <laughs> Finally. After two months had passed, curiosity got the better of the townsfolk. They milled around Abner Elliot's rundown home. Let's bust down the door. Let's see what it looks like inside. You're the filthy hovel. So they broke into Abner Elliot's house. Only it surprised them. It wasn't infested with rats, and it wasn't filthy and dirty. What? It's a, it's a mate, an orderly. We can spawn, except for the dust on those polish on the polished tables. Yes, Abner Elliot's house surprised the townspeople. Really surprised them. Everything was in its place. Everything was clean, spotless. Only one thing marred the orderliness. Only one thing was out of place. Abner's two-month-old corpse hanging in the parlor. He he's stunned! Killed himself. Now, now, kiddies. Don't pick up the ending. Relax and enjoy it. Don't worry. I'm as mad at Henry Burgundy and his son as you are. We won't let him get away with this. Or rather, Abner won't. But it took him almost a year. Let's see. It was a year. A whole year after Abner killed himself. They buried him in Potter's Field, just outside of town. On the eve of February 14th, just as the town steeple bell told midnight, on the first anniversary of Abner's suicide, a strange thing happened. The soil on Abner's grave cracked open. A fetid, rotting hand reached up. Another followed. The thing pushed up into the brisk winter air. It got to its feet, swaying uncertainly. Then it stumbled off toward town. Crawling clods of grey mud fell away as it tottered along. Bits of muddy, moldy, foul-smelling flesh dropped in its path. It seemed to know, to sense where it was going. Harold Burgundy was addressing St. Valentine's Day's guards with the time when the thing came in. They were leftovers from the previous year. Harold spoke around as the searing stench burned his nostrils. In the morning, out 
Henry Burgundy looked for Harold and couldn't find him. But in his room, he found a neatly tied package. The card said, A Valentine's Day greeting to Henry. He opened it. Happy Valentine's Day. You were mean and cruel to me from the start. And now you have no heart. Good Lord! Yet, kiddies, Harold's heart was in a neat little package. All blood and sticky. <laughs> well, don't look so shocked. That's what you're saying on St. Valentine's Day, isn't it? Hearts? Why? Not real ones? Oh, and I've been doing it for years. No wonder I'm not popular. Now, if you can still hold this...